We've been working on a project uh, called the Fun Factory, exploring the heritage of toy making in Walthamstow. We found out that Wells Brim Toy was based in the same road as the Limes, which is a children's and community centre, and we wanted to involve our children and young people in a project that would investigate and look at the history of toy making in the area. Wells Brim Toy was a very important manufacturer of early tin plate toys. Originally, Wells Brim Toy was in Summers Road, and then much later they moved to Stirling Road, where they had bigger premises. Uh, it was certainly a major employer in Walthamstow. Thelma Wells and Sylvia Brimley. <laughs> and that's oh, when they combined the two families to make the family at the, the factory Wells Brim Toy. Uh, that's at Wells's, Wells Brim Toy, yeah. That was my first job. I got it because, well, my dad worked there and my sisters worked there and it was a bit of a thing in the family, family place. Thing. That, yeah. It was fair size, really, yeah. The tool room was over there. This was the factory, the machines either side and you walked down the, the aisle. It was a big place because they had, I mean, big double gates because, I mean, the lorries had to come in to be loaded to transport the stuff all over the country or, and, well, I assume the world as well. We've also involved elders in the community, so older people from the area. We've been recording their recollections and memories at a series of lunches. Can I just say we are serving food to the elderly people and show them what we've been doing? I look forward to it and it's going to be great. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Yeah, right? yeah. I'm Asma. Oh, nice to meet you. And, you. and this, this is my mum and dad and me when I was born, two weeks old. My mum was eight, uh, 19 then, she was working at Wellesley's when I was born. Yeah, my dad was the coach driver, took him out on a coach trip. And this was probably one of the coach trips and, 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 and she married, she married uh, Bob Robin, who was the coach driver. Yeah. Toy making would have been extremely important because we have the world's Brim toy and then we have britons as well and so these and britons went on to be a very big company um, so it would have been remarkably important in, in walthamstow the more we talk today the more these pieces of what it was actually like to work in the factories comes together and I think that's been a very satisfying part of the project. I oh, mean this area there were so many factories and little small mm. factories around yes. these areas. Mm -hmm. Nobody had if they wanted a job there was always somewhere where you could go. Yeah, yeah. every item had a different set of tools to bend it, that's to true. seal it. All the tools were made on site and then they would go from the uh, um, tool room to the uh, factory floor to be made up and in the end it comes out as an article like that. Well, this were tea Sutherland. toys like you've got there. Britons were lead toys. Yes. Lead soldiers and all that. Yeah. Well, there, yeah, tin. It, well, I mean, you open a tin now, I mean, you can cut yourself easy as anything. It must have been really hard for the women. Okay. And soft fingers, because it had lugs on the side, lugs. Oh, yeah. I suppose they had to, a bit like a corned beef can, isn't it? Like flatten that lug down, you know, give us sore fingers. Well, you can actually see the lugs on it that actually hold it together, looking at it properly. So, I mean, it must have, they must have been really tiny to actually turn them little bits over. They painted them in the factory, but you had other ladies outside doing them as well. And uh, as I said, my mate was delivering uh, me to take the stuff round to the ladies and the stuff, what they got, they'd put it in the lorry and take it back to the factory. The paints, yeah, the paints used to be in little pots, very thin brushes, fiddly work, <laughs> very fiddly work. <laughs> and they wasn't allowed the, the radio on at all, only with workers' playtime. So I used to have to go and unlock this room and turn the radio on. And I did get distracted and forgot it and they used to listen to whatever was afterwards. But they wasn't allowed to, to listen to the radio other than workers' playtime. Yeah, and my mum and her 
her friend Margaret Weedy that were very friendly. They might be working like other at each end of the factory, but they'd be singing along or whistling or waving to each other and they'd get told off, I guess because they weren't doing their numbers. I worked there for about a year, year and a half. And it was it's hard it was hard work. And you're all sitting along the conveyor belt trying to drink your tea and because you never got a tea break. <laughs> and then you had to get so many done to get any bonus. So of course you never left your belt because you wanted to get the bonus. It wasn't a lot of money. So if it's not indelicate, what happened if you needed to uh, spend a penny? Well you had to put your hand up. <laughs> like you was at school. Like <laughs> yeah. yeah. And someone would come along the conveyor belt. So each of you could go, and you was timed, and more than five minutes. <laughs> they did have security checks, yeah, yeah. but... But you're dead. Oh, no. no. No, that makes me sound like a villain. <laughs> 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 he used to borrow something and put it through the fence, that one you're talking about, and then he used to get on his bike and then pick it up and take it home. My nephew had another little train set. <laughs> <laughs> but it was one of the perks. <laughs> you did used to have a laugh, I think, when you worked in factories. Yeah. You know, you though it was hard work, but you still had a laugh. You know, it wasn't you just went to work and that was it. You did have, I mean, it was highlight of my day, having three children, then <laughs> kind of work, but having a laugh while I was at work. Oh, that must have been happy days. Yeah. I never thought I'd be here to tell the tale that my mum worked there. I had such a shock when I saw that letter. Does anybody got any memories of Wales's? I said to my daughter, oh my God, that's where Nan used to work. I've got to write what I know. We've involved our children and young people in going to workshops to learn woodworking skills at Black Horse Workshop. So, hello. This is I'm Patrick. Hello. This is uh, Black Horse Workshop. We're going to be making little fusses or penguins or both. <laughs> Those, we will sand them all down. After we sand them down, we sand them down the shape. And then after we sand them down, we paint them. What are you making? I'm making another toy peddler. Again. What, how are you making it? Using wood and then template. And then draw out of it and then. Use the this. What are you cutting it out with? This. What's that? A saw. centre for us and it's, this is the first time it's properly been put into use uh, so we were obviously a bit nervous about how the space would work I mean one comment that Patrick came out of and I said oh, how did it go how did it go and he said they were the happiest people that I've ever seen like coming out of her. they were like unlike all the adult education where people are too worried about what they're making and whether they've done it right and he said that there was just this exuding joy from people that, that you know that they've made something they're happy with and that was really satisfying guess what you only broke one blade this week. That's amazing. I think you deserve a big clap. Yay! It's a uh, Strictly Come Dancing penguin. Disco Penguin. Yay! Have I got little bunny ears? No. 